How you doing folks? Alan Wallace here. We are at Sheer and Shine Barbering Salon where we provide the professional barbering, um, massage and skincare treatments for all you guys. Um, we've got a special guest in the salon today. We have Aaron Roach Bridgman who's come down to, you know, show some love and just have a quick chat. How you doing Aaron? I'm good brother, thank you for having me man. Yeah man, no, it's good to get you down man. Um, so yeah, so tell us about yourself man. I mean like, who is Aaron Roach Bridgman? Wow, that's a question. <laughs> Um, Aaron Roach Bridgman, do you know what? I'm just a normal guy, first of all. Mm. But um, other than that, I've just been blessed with the opportunity to be able to um, present, mm. host, interview. Um, that's kind of what I do like with my life yeah. um, at the moment. Um, I present on a channel called SBTV, mm. um, which is like one of the UK's biggest youth um, online entertainment channels. Mm. Um, I also do a lot of other things as well. I do a lot of youth mentoring. And in fact, I, I did some youth mentoring for a good couple of years, just around the corner from here. I'm an organisation called Lives Not Lives. Yeah. Um, also, rap poetry, do spoken word as well, journalist, done some acting. Um, yeah, I try, I try to stay busy, so man. Try to stay busy. Yeah. Being in a lot of pies then. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. But yeah. it's firmly in the presenting pie at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. That is where I'm focusing. You say that's always been like your original passion. Have you always wanted to do it, or no. is it kind of a no? That's the thing. See, people always ask me that, and it's like, I, and it's like when I say no, they they look at me a little bit confused. But yeah. to be honest, um, I always say it was kind of like a beautiful mistake mm. because, um, like I said, I was um, a journalist. I was writing for a lot of like online magazines, like um, underground kind of magazines, and I remember I started working for one. And I, I suggested to them that they should do a red carpet for a film premiere. Mm. And because um, I had done that previously somewhere else, and they were like, yeah, that's a good idea. They were like, come down as well. I was like, yeah, I'll come down. And when I got down there, they were like, yeah, go in front of camera. Mm. I was like, what? I was like, no, I don't do that. It turned out to a big argument of going back and forth. They were like, just do it. I was like, no, I can't do that. That's not me. Yeah. Back and forth. And in the end, I did it. And it just really was just natural. Yeah. And then from there, it's just like I just started progressing with it. It hasn't really stopped. Okay. Yeah, because I know that the presenting game is quite, it's, it's not easy, like, no, it's, not. it's not easy at all, there's a lot of people out there that's like trying to get into it, doing their own thing, yeah. I mean, how have you found like the challenges so far? Um, it's still a challenge, yeah. it's still a challenge, like, I didn't even realise there were so many people doing it, yeah. to be quite honest, if I did, maybe I might not, because <laughs> when, I, when I got into it, because I, I, I thought about it long and hard, because I, I used to do music, like I was still trying to um, act, but then I thought, when I found presenting I thought you know I found um, my own lane here and it's like all the other lanes seem to be very congested mm -hmm. but I felt like being um, being young being a young male and trying to present I started looking around the um, industry and I started thinking how many like male presenters do I even see on TV mm -hmm. and then I realized there's not that many yeah. do you know what I mean so I thought I found my own lane but definitely since I've been making progress in it I've seen it as a very very um, popular career field yeah. for a lot of people trying to choose it and it is hard but I think the only thing that you can do is be yourself and strive to be the, the best version of yourself and yeah. always keep that genuine kind of character on camera. Mm. And if people people like character enough, it will take you far, take you far, man. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I see. So um, I saw a few of your, your other interviews and yeah. I've seen that you've interviewed some pretty some pretty big names. Yeah, yeah. Obviously that you're with me now, so this is obviously the biggest name. Yeah, of course. So far. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, other than that, I mean, like, who, who would you say is the, the biggest celebrity that you've interviewed and, and how was it? Um, ooh, depending on what you, what you consider big, like, there's been, um, I think one of my biggest and best has probably been Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. Like, that was, um, that was real fun. Yeah. Like, we made that, we made that a very fun interview. I saw that one still. Yeah. Like, you try and get the date. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's all for the camera, really. It's all, <laughs> it's all for the camera. It's all for the entertainment. Yeah. Um, Kelly Rowland was a very entertaining yeah. one as well. Mm. Um, who else did I like? Uh, Usain Bolt was quite fun. Yeah. Usain Bolt was quite fun, and um, Richard Branson was quite inspiring as well. Mm. Richard Branson, like, when I when I got to speak to him, because like he's a very normal guy, and he's almost kind of shy about how successful he is, and it's yeah. like, but at the same time, he's still so determined to do so much more, and it's like, it's very inspiring to see someone at yeah, the top of their game, still hungry. kind of achieving it all, so to speak, but they're still so hungry for more. Yeah. So yeah, man, I feel blessed to have met um, some very inspirational people. Have you come across any egos? Um, 
Yeah, that, but that goes without saying. Like, I, my own ego sometimes yeah. can match. You know what I mean? I think we can all um, become a little bit immersed in ourselves. Do you know what I mean? Especially when you start seeing success. Mm. But um, in terms of people that I've interviewed, nah, not really nothing too bad. There was a situation with Trey Songs, to be quite honest. Yeah. But that was more to do with some stuff that he had going on i think something went was going on with him himself like we were in the room waiting for him and when he came and he tried to have the whole room cleared and stuff like that and i was thinking, what's going on but then after he apologized and just explained yo we just had some business to take care of and a few things happened so that's understandable do you know what i mean yeah man. but no nah, not really it's cool all right so like i want to i want to ask you a question yeah i don't, yeah. don't want to get you in too much trouble that's yeah. cool i don't want to get you in too much trouble but out of all of the ladies, because I know you've interviewed some beautiful yeah. ladies here, yeah. who would you say has been that the, the hottest chick that you that you've interviewed so far? Ooh. Do you know what, yeah? Obviously it's just a question. Do you know what, yeah? Um there's some ladies that you meet, yeah, that you don't realise yeah. how attractive they are until you meet them. Like I never because I'm not really a crush kind of I don't, I've got a crush on so I'm not really a crush kind of guy, it's not really me. Yeah. But there's two people that come to mind. The first one is Vanessa from the Saturdays. Like mm. she is just got really good skin and like she's just um she's quite attractive. Oh Vanessa, is that the one that's married to um Nah she's not married though. I think I believe she might still be single. Is that uh, which one's Vanessa? She's got like kind of like brownie skin and like she looks a little bit Chinese. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I'm trying to find her still. Yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to find her, still. Her, her and Jamelia they're on my list. Oh Jamelia is yeah. like yeah. that is what you call like classic beauty yeah do you know what i mean like she's been she's been a beauty for a minute yeah like, and she still is even though she's aging mm. she's still beautiful um another person is alicia keys yeah alicia keys like alicia keys um because I, I had a lot of friends like growing up it's kind of mad because i remember last week to myself real we used to spend time in mm. school talking about this girl and yeah. now i'm sitting next to her it's yeah. like it's like it's crazy and i remember like i know I, I never really fancied her but then i remember like alicia alicia's very funny like we were bantering before we started the interview and then she was just like yo you ready you ready and i'm just joking like trying to like trying to kind of put me off and yeah. i was just like i'm ready you better make sure you're ready you know yeah. just joking about and then i kind of looked over at one at one point and i was like this woman is actually beautiful i, I, I remember looking at her nose yeah. and saying even her nose is beautiful do you know what i mean do you know what i mean and then like it kind of actually got me a little bit that's the first time i think ever when i've been interviewing that i felt a little bit like i felt whoa like i felt kind of yeah, nervous yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so i told my camera and he was like i already right, i was like no just give me 30 seconds she's like you all right Pete? i'm like yeah i'm cool i'm cool just give me 30 seconds and i just paced myself and then we did the interview so, 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 so we know why Swiss got caught up yeah uh, yeah <laughs> he's a very lucky man trust me he's got caught up yeah this is our own question here. Yeah. Um, basically, we've got a Facebook group. Yeah. It's called Barbershop Banter. Cool. So we have a lot of debates going on, a lot cool. of political debates going on. Uh, and we also film a weekly show here. Where cool. We have like conversations about whatever's going on. That's nice. The last topic that we had last week was a big topic, which was multiple dating. So you know, like nowadays, you've got like women. Uh-huh. They go on lots of different dates. You've got like uh-huh. dating websites and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. The women were in favour of multiple dating. Because you know, you don't really know a guy, you need to get to know him, you need to meet all different guys. The guys were. Against... When you say multiple dating, you mean like dating more than one person at one time? Yeah. Okay, you're going cool, yeah. to meet lots of different yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, guy. I understand, yeah. The guys were against it, innit? Okay. They're saying that, you know, you should date one guy at a time. Like, <laughs> once, you, once you know where that's going, do you know what I mean? Like, you, you find out whether you like the guy or not, yeah. and then if you don't like him, then you date another guy, innit? Yeah. So that's the favourite we were having. So, like, we would like to know the bridgeman. Perspective. Perspective. Yeah. Do you know what, yeah? The guys are just gassing anyway because they're double standard. <laughs> when it comes to them, they're not trying to just date the one girl. When you're dating, you're try- you are trying to find, I guess, the, um, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to gauge what you do like and what you don't like. Mm. And by having a choice of a few and, and knowing how different uh, uh, an array of different people are, it kind of gives you the understanding of, um, of what's good for you or what works for you do you know what i mean mm. like if you don't have experience you don't know what you like i always say to people like how do you know that cheese and onion is your favorite walkers chris if you haven't tasted the whole walkers range yeah do you know what i mean you need to taste the whole range before you know that cheese and onion is your favorite do you know what i mean so in terms of the girls dating mode do you know what go for it 
Yeah, yeah but like go for it. Let, let the girls do their thing, man. Go for it. It depends how far they're taking the dating as well, though. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like we have to have respect to morals in this thing as well. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you can't just be going loose. Yeah. But if you are just generally trying to get to like know different people and engage different people, and you're, mm. yeah, man, you're single. That's what you're supposed yeah. to. Do. You're supposed to date. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, but I, I would just say make sure you. Yeah. Up, up that's 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 the angle that the girls yeah. are trying to work. Uphold your but morals. See, see us guys, we don't really have it to be honest. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. We 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 understand that we're in a recession right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, not not a lot of us really want to be taking girls for dinner. Okay. If I they're going to be doing the same thing on Tuesday. Okay. If my man. But they the do, bro. And it, and even and, and even if you don't sanction it, they're still going to do it's it, bro. Happen regardless. I've yeah. got female friends, so I'm lucky that I've came. I've come to see the female perspective over the last couple of years, and I'm like, wow, I never knew it was like this. Mm. Like they've taken the same game that we were spitting. Yeah, and they've changed it, modernized it, modified it, and then they've got their own version right now, bro. So they know that, and we're so stupid, we're like, yeah, okay. We yeah. don't even know what's going on, cuz. Yeah, yeah. Trust me, they, they, girls know what they're doing, and even if you don't agree with it or don't want them to do it, they're gonna do it. Just be the best man, or just, you know, win our heart, fam, if she's yeah, really yeah. the one for you. Yeah. If you're genuine and 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 and, and you're that guy, yeah. she'll go for you. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what do you reckon? What do I think? Yeah. I think that multiple dating is good in the sense where, like you said, it's choice. Mm. Everyone has a choice, and I believe that women, men, we're all equal to do whatever we like. Real too. And, yeah. and if you limit your limit your horizons, you're not going to get what you need. It looks like I'm in the wrong. Like it looks like looks like. I think you might have had like, your heart I, broken. I have to no, you, have you had your heart broken, bro? Like, broken I'm, I'm just yeah. tight. You know what I mean? I'm just stingy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I can't be like, you know, in McDonald's with a with a girl about to buy her a Happy Meal, and then she's like, "Oh, is that how you do it?" Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's <laughs> why you're still dating, cuz. Maybe that's why you're dating. You gotta at least try and step it up a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm playing, but you know, I can't be like, I don't really like if I'm out with a, with a lady and I'm, you know, take her to a nice place yeah. and we're eating, and then I'm like, "Oh, like, what was you doing yesterday? Or how was your weekend? Oh, well, I was out with so and so, like." Yeah, and some girls are honest. I like, just hear the record just go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. like, nah, I'm, I don't know. I think my ego is too big for it, you know. Like, I can't, I just feel like you know, I need to be it, the only guy. If it, if it, if it, if it offends you, mm. that means you care about her more. Maybe. And that means maybe you need to make her yours, cousin. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I think it's a double standard thing yeah. to be right. No, of course it is. Of course it is. We want our cake and eat, but we want to give them one slice of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, of a cupcake. Yeah. We don't want to give them a slice of a pie, we want to give them a slice of a cupcake and we want to have multiple pies for ourselves, do you know what I mean? Mm. I think that's a man thing. But um, we are definitely living in a, in a more modern time, yeah. do you know what I mean? Times have changed, yeah. And like they all said, like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's equality, man. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If, if we can do it, they must can do it as well. Mm. And trust me, if we're doing it, trust me, they're doing it better, bro. Right. Believe me. So, yeah, man, you gotta, you got to make sure you make that choice. Don't waste no time with no girl that isn't worth it as well. Yeah. Some of these girls ain't worth it, but you're trying to get to a certain place with them, so you're doing things that you shouldn't really be doing with them, mm. treating them a certain way. If they're not worth that treatment, don't get to them. Mm. Yeah, so um, obviously you're saying that um, you as a journalist, you started yeah. as a journalist. Yeah. So, I mean, what kind of, what type of journalism were you into? Um, do you know what? Uh, initially, it was, um, it was kind of um, broad, but I started in, in university. I started um, writing for my university newspaper. In fact, I came. I became the first black section editor at that university newspaper ever. I think possibly I might still only be the the, the, first, the only black male section editor of that university paper in all time. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So that was a big thing for me. And the, edit, the section that I used to do was TV. Mm. So I've always had a an interest in um, in entertainment. But I used to do lifestyle and relationship advice as well. Mm. I used to write articles about relationships, about females and males, about their perspectives and their thinking. Okay. Um, I also used to do restaurant reviews. Mm. I used to go to restaurants and eat for free and just talk about it. Just yeah. make their restaurants sound good. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, I came back to London because I was in Birmingham when I went to university. Came back to London. Um, I should do that, so then I can take the dates to nice restaurants. Well, there you go. You, <laughs> you see, there's always a way around these yeah, things, bro. There's always that's a the, way. That's the tightness coming out of me. I'll tell you what, listen. I'll mean, <laughs> tell you something. Look, sure. there's, there's something called a taste card. Yeah? yeah. I don't know if you've heard of it. Get one, bro. Yeah. There's loads of restaurants across London. Yeah, all across the country that you can go to, and, mm. and you only pay 50% of your bill. Okay. 
Okay. All you gotta do is buy the place card. It's like about thirty pounds. Okay. But anyway, that's besides the point. But yeah, so um, came back to London. Um, actually, before that, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I worked at the Times newspaper. Like I did like um two two weeks there, and um I got printed in the Times newspaper when I was like a youth man, like in two thousand and ten. That was the first day I think that all the men in the hood bought the Times newspaper. Yeah. Because they just want to see my name. Like, oh, yo, Roach is in the Times newspaper, cousin. Yeah. Everyone's going mad. And then I did um work experience with um Total Film magazine as well, and I worked with another place called Start Your Business TV slash Start Your Business magazine. And um yeah, I started building it up, but I always knew that like my interest li- like laid in in urban work. Well, for one of a for one of a better word, urban music. Yeah. And um, I started writing for a what was actually at the time a UK funky magazine because UK funky like this is before kind of like it kind of got massive massive, and I was kind of on the house thing. Mm. I still am on the house thing, and then I started writing for them. Then it got broader and it turned into this like urban as a whole, and then um, someone told me about the SP. No, before that, I started hosting a, um, live music shows. Yeah. Um, for up and coming talent. And then someone told me that I hosted a show for for a for an open mic kind of night, and that person that organised that told me to um, apply for the SBTV thing, mm. and then yeah, the rest is history. I didn't even know when I went to the audition. It's like Channel Four was filming it. It was on Channel Four on a series. Yeah. There was bare cameras. I, I wasn't even expecting. That. I thought it was going to be a normal audition. Yeah. And then yeah, so I went in there auditioned. I was the first person to audition. I ended up winning the whole thing. Yeah. SPT is massive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Really so what, I was, um, I, cause I met Jamal, but I've never really met him. Yeah, before. yeah, What's yeah. Like, like? Jamal's cool, bro. Yeah. Jamal's just a normal guy. Yeah. He's a normal guy. He, and the thing is, he's still a normal, he's young. Yeah. And he's still a normal young yeah. young man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, because I'm, well, I'm a bit older than him, mm. a tiny bit, mm. a tiny bit older than him. So, like, certain times, it's like, um, he comes to me for advice on certain things. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? And it's like, I, uh, I respect that he respects my opinion on yeah, things, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, he's, I think people are very surprised at how normal he is. Yeah, he's he's just like the rest of us. Yeah, he seems very cool. Invite him down to the um, FIFA tournament. I will, but it's hard FIFA to get him to be yeah. anywhere, bro. He, like, he's, sometimes, like, we're communicating, and it's like, we're communicating in a conversation. This conversation goes on for days, bro, yeah. because I might, we might say something to each other and then I don't hear back from him for like three days and, yeah, and the conversation, yeah. conversation continues, I reply and then it might go yeah. on for another three days and then it's hard to, it's hard to get him to hold on because he's so busy because yeah. Jamal Edwards is now a brand bro. Yeah. That's the thing, he's actually, he's, he's, he's actually a brand in his own right now. Mm. So it's different. But yeah man, he's a cool guy man and, I, and obviously I've got utmost respect for him because he put me on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I had to win the competition ultimately but you could have said no, I don't like him and not give him a chance but then I got my chance and it's like I, f- I felt like I kind of proved myself instantaneously because the interview that I did with Kelly Rowling went viral yeah like all over it was on world star hip hop it was on like about 25 different websites across yeah. the world and really truthfully no one even known who I was that I could do that if it wasn't for SBTV it could be an opportunity so yeah man I got I got eternal love for him eternal love for him so what are your like um, what's your future plans my future plans are Mainstream TV, that's what I'm aiming at right now, to be quite honest. Mm. I want to get some form of mainstream TV presenting kind of role, whether it be my own show, whether it be hosting a show, whether it be um, being part of um, being part of a show. Like, I'm doing a lot of writing as well. Like, you see, this thing, this, this whole industry, people don't realise you have to be more than just a, more than just funny or more than just a face. Yeah. You have to do a lot of things. You've got, you got to know how to write concepts. You've got to know how to, to come up with concepts, how to write ideas and pitch them and mm. produce things as well as present them so like that's what i'm working on at the moment but definitely trying to get into mainstream tv yeah. um a few opportunities that i'm looking at at the moment that and people that i'm working with that are looking very um very 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 full of potential i don't want to say too much at the moment because i, I believe in jinxing things yeah. you know what i mean yeah. but yeah it's, it's looking good man in fact i'm going to edinburgh next week to the edinburgh tv festival um and there's going to be like some of the most massive people from TV in our country that's going to be there yeah. and it's all going to be about networking and um, telling people about your ideas and like taking advice and all that kind of stuff so yeah man a lot of things happening right now I'm work, I might I might be um, well I am going to be doing uh, a one man show so to speak yeah. I've done one when I first became presenter of SB TV um, in Kensington it was called an evening with Aaron Roche Bridgman I believe this one might be called the same thing as well um but yeah, we're still in the development stage at the moment. 
Also, I'm doing Days in the Life of Aaron Roche Bridgman. The first episode came out already. That was quite cool. Working on the second episode now, editing it up. This might be included in one of the episodes as well, so I might take some of this footage yeah. and put it in the episode as well. Um, what else? Musical Lights. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the resident host of that. It's in the Indigo O2 in Greenwich. We've got T-Pain headlining the next show, and I'm going to be hosting that. Yeah. We've got Young and P Money and Little Sims is doing the support for that as well. Yeah. Um, that'll be a big show. Um, yeah, a lot of things I'm working on. Though. Yeah, yeah, a lot of things working on. I'm just trying to stay busy. I'm trying to stay busy, man. Yeah, man, no, that sounds good. So I mean, like, with the, um, I saw that some of your stuff, you do a lot of poetry as well. Yes, yes. So you have like a, you have the talent inside, like the musical side as well. Yeah, like, tell yeah. Tell us a bit about that. Um, to be honest, um, before all of this stuff, like as a, from about the age of about maybe 12, 13, mm. I used to MC. Mm. And um, at first, when we first started MC, and it was other people's lyrics. Mm. So it was so solid all the way through. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I used to take on Romeo and Asher. That was just me. Check out the ice on my toe. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, that was just like, <laughs> that was just what man was doing. Yeah. And then man started yeah. writing. Man, Asher, you got rich back in the day. Asher was, man, he's yeah. probably one of the best MCs yeah, ever to do this, but people don't even realize, bro. Yeah, Trust me. Underrated. Asher was spitting sense when people were still talking about yeah. Asher, Asher was coming with lyrics, mm. not just talking, you know, sounds. You yeah. get me? And then, um, yeah, so MC is how it started. And then, like, I remember I originally said, like, oh, do you know what? Now I'm not even doing this no more. I'm retiring because. I mean, we were about 17 because what happened is a lot of people started doing music. When we started doing music, people weren't really doing it, bro. Mm. There was a few crews around the way. Do you know what I mean? And we used to do and, and we weren't even really putting it out there to try and be famous. We, we just used to do music because we used to like doing music. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then um, he was just like, nah. Because everywhere we were going, everyone was an MC and he got fed up with it. So that kind of came to an end. But I was still slightly writing rhymes and still making tunes by myself. Mm. But what people didn't know is that I was writing poetry from a young boy. But I was writing very high English poetry, so I never told no one about it. Yeah. Because I didn't want, it would make, wouldn't make sense. I've got, I've got lyrics on the mic, yeah. but then I've got these high English Shakespearean yeah, yeah, yeah. type um, poems. Yeah. So I hid it for like for years, but I had like a, like a book full of pure poems, but no one didn't know about it. And then one day when I was, I was at uni now, I was just like, you know, I'm going to let people know about what I do. Yeah. So I made a blog and I started putting my poetry on there. And people were just like, rare. Yeah. Like your writing is amazing. I didn't do spoken word though, but then um, I, I got involved with a program called Roots and Roots, and they they make like an international talent development program. So we've got like Roots and Roots UK, Roots and Roots France, Roots and Roots Germany, Hungary, Finland, Spain. We've got talent all over um, um, the the, um, the world really. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then we used to come together and do shows and stuff. I had to audition to get onto that program. Mm. Now when I auditioned, they t- after after my audition, they told me, look, we want you. They're like, you, you used to write lyrics and you write poetry. We want you to combine both and do spoken poetry. I was like, yeah. nah, I don't, I don't really like that. Because at the time, it was more people that were doing that whole, um, as I walk into a room, yeah. and I didn't like all that. That wasn't yeah, what I was about. Yeah. I wanted to spit my, my if I was going to spit it, spit it how I spit it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, But they, they challenged me and then they made me write a poem to a certain concept. And I changed the way that I did it. So I'd slowed it down and I started to... Um, to make it into poetry, but my style of poetry, and it started working. I started getting bookings. Mm. I got a lot of bookings at comedy shows because mm. a lot of my poems were kind of comedic. Yeah. Like I used to um, add like a lot of character into it, and that's kind of maybe how I started my presenting thing as well. So I was getting bookings and stuff as a poet before I was even presenting, and then yeah, time went on and then things carried on. But when presenting started really kicking off, like a lot of my other passions kind of got pushed to the side, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I'm getting back on it now. Yeah. Like, especially the poetry grind. I might be doing something on. Um, if you've heard Word in the Cup, no. If you've heard of them? Yeah, I might be doing something with them. Like in about two weeks. Okay. They challenged me to to pick it back up again. So yeah. Yeah, man. Let us see. Let us see. Yeah. It's great. Stay in contact, man. I will. We'll support that. Put that out there. Thank uh, you. Um, last question. Yeah. For um, for any young people that's thinking about like a career in presenting, getting into presenting, yeah. that how would you kind of I know you kind of fell into it, but I mean, yeah. would you, how would you kind of suggest that they go about it? Um, definitely start putting yourself out there for people that have YouTube channels, that might have online magazines. Mm. Put yourself out there and do some work that you might not get paid for, but build up that experience. Like, I done loads of things, bro. Like, I used to, like, work in the furthest part of, like, Northwest London, that's technically not even London, and I used to go to Brixton every week to do a news flash 
with someone that I was working with. And like that news flash was really like beneficial to my life. It didn't pay me or anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But it was beneficial to my life because I used that when I was applying to be a presenter. Yeah. They asked for a show reel. A show reel is like an example of all the work that you've done. I didn't even have one. Yeah. But I had examples of that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So do things and I also I started doing presenting like at different events and stuff for the little magazine that I was working with. All these things are helping because it's helping you to build up your your um, your experience. Yeah. Also build up your talent and your craft. And um, yeah, it's 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 invaluable, bro. Like it's just so beneficial, so beneficial to you as a, as a talent. But yeah, working hard, bro. Working hard, staying focused, keeping your eye, keeping foresight in your mind, keeping your eye on the prize because it's so easy to lose track of that. Mm. Like especially in this industry, because this industry is hard, bro. Yeah. It's hard. It's times you think to yourself, like, why am I still doing this? Like it's not benefiting me in no way. Like I'm getting fed up. But you've got to have belief in yourself. And have foresight to keep going. Yeah. So hard work, having foresight to keep going, um, gain experience by working with people, put yourself out there, and then ultimately the biggest thing is just be you. Yeah. I always tell people be you. Like it's one of the most beautiful things in the world to know that you're being yourself, and people can actually appreciate and respect that. Mm. It makes your job easy as well. All you gotta do is the cameras turn on. All you gotta do is be yourself. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You ain't gotta turn no character on. You just gotta be yourself and just like be well. Oh yeah, research. Researching and being well prepared, like presenting might seem like it's all fun and smiling to the camera and acting up, but it's a lot about research and prepping yourself. And I think a lot of people have commented on my style for, about that. They, they always say that I seem like I know a lot about what's going on. Yeah. I'll tell you the truth, sometimes I didn't even know who the person I was interviewing was until like a minute before, or not a minute before, but like a few days before. Like, for instance, I remember I interviewed Dynamo, yeah, yeah. and then after we um, I interviewed with Childish Gambino came up. Mm. I mean, I need to go there now, mm. bro. I didn't really know who Charles Gambino was. No word of a lie. From the cab, from one, from from the interview to the next interview, I did all my research, got my questions mm. ready, and did the interview. Charles Gambino was so impressed. He was like, "Really, you know so much? Yeah. If he ever knew that, I only knew about him a couple of minutes earlier, he would never believe it." Thank so it's cool. Of course, <laughs> course, bro, course. Do you know what I mean? We've got the internet. Let's use yeah, it. Yeah, so sure. definitely, being well prepared and researching yeah. is pivotal in this industry. But it's all about hard work, having focus, having foresight, being determined putting yourself out there, networking, talking to people, and being you, bro, mm. being you. Yeah. And that's what I would say in terms of if you want to try and make it, man. Boy. Well, thanks for that, man. Thanks for, thanks for blessing us and it's coming cool, down bro. still. Um, that was Aaron. Oh, where can we reach you? Where can people reach um, you? Twitter, at A Roach Bridgman. Instagram, Aaron Roach Bridgman. Um, website, AaronRoachBridgman.com. Yeah, man. Go. Google my full name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just Google it. Yeah. Your research. All right, thanks a lot, bro. Thank you, bro. And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys soon on the next episode.